Well, welcome to the Inspiration Incubator, everyone. Today, we have a special guest. When I tell you this woman is on the move in her community, making sure her constituents have everything that they need within resources and beyond, you're just in for a treat. Welcome to the Inspiration Incubator, Council Member, Dr. Carolyn evans Shabazz. Hello, I'm Council Member Carolyn evans Shabazz, City Council Member for District D, the District of Destination. I'm pleased to announce that District D will host its annual Back to School Drive on Saturday, August 14th, beginning at 10 a.m. Through a partnership with local Sunnyside Business Concrete Pros, District D will be able to distribute school supplies to approximately 500 students the upcoming academic school year. This year, the Back to School Drive will be located at Sunnyside Park. We have put so much hard work into planning this event, and it brings me just warm feelings inside to think about what we used to do. You know, when we went to the drive-ins and all of those things that the, some of you young people are missing out on. Don't know nothing about that. So I am so very thankful very thankful to be a part of this. I'm Council Member Carolyn Evans Shabazz, the Council Member for District D, what I call the District of Destination. And we are here this morning at the St. James Episcopal Church, 3129 South Moore, distributing food. We have milk, we have meat, we have canned goods, we have fruit. So please come out, 3129. We'll be here until 1 p.m. And I want to thank you, Pastor, uh, Pastor Father Victor Thomas, for allowing this service to be performed at his church in the center of District D. How are you today? Oh, I'm great. Good afternoon on this rainy, rainy Saturday, but God is still good. Yes, you look beautiful as always, just as you do in your pictures and, you know, when you're in city council. I'm just so excited that you could fit me into your schedule today with everything that you have going on. So before we jump in and we hear about District D and how you just running, you know, making sure everybody has everything that they need. Can you take us back and tell us a little bit about your family history. You actually have very interesting family history as it relates to your grandfather and growing up with, a, you know, an educator in the family. So just give us, you know, a little snapshot of what it was like when you were younger growing up here in Texas. Well, thank you uh, for having me today. Mm -hmm. And actually, I um, come from a background where both of my parents were educators my father was a longtime basketball coach at the Jack Gates High School. Mm -hmm. And my mother was a first grade teacher in the Houston Independent School District. Uh, my father's father, uh, Dr. E.B. Evans, was the first president of Prairie View A&M University. And so um, a few of my family members attended Prairie View. I did not. I went to Spelman College. Mm -hmm. But, you know, another little tidbit that, I never really shared much. Uh, you know, yesterday, uh, Sidney Poitier passed. And I have a, a, well, he was a cousin, but we called him uncle. And actually the TSU Playhouse is named after him, Arlington Smith. And he, he shared with us uh, before he died, he's been deceased for many, many years. Um, he shared with us that when Sidney Poitier came to this country. Sidney Poitier, the beloved actor and activist, died at the age of 94. Respected for his roles both on and off the screen, he broke barriers. He was the first black man to win an Oscar for Best Male Actor back in 1964. He was also nominated for a Tony for his role in A Raisin in the Sun. He was a trailblazer and a champion for civil rights. Fellow actor and activist Harry Belafonte released a statement writing in part, he was truly my brother and partner in trying to make this world a better, a little better. He certainly made mine a whole. He couldn't speak English well. And my uncle actually is the one that taught him how to speak English. Really? And so he mentioned my uncle in a book that he wrote, but he couldn't remember his name. And so I thought that that was pretty ironic that my uncle had shared that story. And then Sidney Poitier said it as well. And so that's a, that's a pretty unique piece of history. I wish I had run into him somewhere 
where I could have asked him or maybe even told him who I was in regards to my uncle. But the Arlington Smith uh, Playhouse, again, is at Texas Southern University in the Hannah Hall Auditorium. So that little piece of history, a lot of people don't know. And I usually don't share it. But I guess because Sydney Poitier passed yesterday, I thought it was significant. But uh, anyway, I grew up in Third Ward, um, went to Turner Elementary School, which is right in the neighborhood where I currently live. Yeah. And then I went to Miller Junior High School, which is now the Young Women's College Prep. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Miller was in that building and then they closed Miller and the students then needed to go to Ryan. But I did continue uh, at Miller. Uh, they stayed open for a couple of years after I graduated. And then I went to the Jack Yates High School. Um, well, in between that, I went to Mount Carmel for a minute and then realized that was not the place for me. I had been in public school all my life. And as I explained to my parents, it's, you just can't take me out of public school and, uh, and put me in private school, you know, after all these years. And so yeah. I'm so glad that I did attend Jack Yates. I was a, uh, in the band initially, and then I was a cheerleader for Jack Yates. And those were some of my best years. I still have some of my friends that are very, very close. You know, if you know anybody from Jack Yates, you know, we bleed crimson and gold and we love Jack Yates. Yeah. Uh, very few people who attended Jack Yates don't tell you about how they are JY for life. Yeah. And so after I uh, graduated from Jack Yates, I got the opportunity to attend Spelman College. And Spelman, I would describe as more of a experience, an experience than an education. It was both. Mm -hmm. uh, you got the opportunity to experience a lot of cultural events, meet a lot of people from a lot of different places. And then we had uh, the world's best instructors at Spelman College. And so, you know, at the time when you're doing that, you really don't appreciate where you are. And then as you later in life, mention the name of Spellman and you see how people's eyes light up, you know, <laughs> that you're really something because you graduated from Spellman College and I, I graduated early, actually, uh, not just on time. I graduated early. And um, even today, I just got a text from my classmates. Uh, we, we keep up a text chain uh, where we communicate almost daily about different things. If, if it's inspirations or jokes, mostly jokes and, and things of that nature, we just try to stay in touch because we realize that a lot of our classmates did not did not make it to 2022. And so we really, really nurture our sisterhood. And so um, I did after I graduated from Spelman, I, I really I became a travel agent for many, many years. And I love uh, traveling and, and, and helping people to get to places that they wanted to go. And then I decided that I was going to be an educator. Oh my God. And so I, uh, as I, I thought that, you know, my parents would have gotten that out of me, but I went on and I taught um, middle school at Fleming Middle School uh, for about nine years, I guess. I was an English reading computer literacy teacher. Then I uh, began, I got my master's in psychology and then I became a, what they call a diagnostician or an evaluation specialist. Mm -hmm. And I went to Fort Bend Willow Ridge and I was a diagnostician for nine years. There. Great, great, great time, met great friends. And then at that time, Willow Ridge had a, an awesome basketball team and they had back to back to back basketball championships. And so we just had a great time just following the team and helping those kids out there. That's, that's, that's the most important thing, but we had fun doing it. Absolutely. And then went to Aldine for about five minutes and I said, no, they all working hard out here. <laughs> Not necessarily <laughs> hard, uh, but hard. And I was used to a different system. So I then went to the Houston independent school district and I, uh, worked in what they call the South District at that time, which was Worthing High School and some of the schools around Worthing. Those, you know, I've really had a great run here. I've, I've really had some, yes. met some people and worked in some great schools and have been able to make a difference in doing that. And so then I, I uh, 
decided, well, uh, I got married in, in <laughs> two, uh, you know, I always tell people because I retired in 2009, I told them he was a part of my retirement package. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. You know what I mean? You got sure you that supplemental income, right? Because <laughs> not always the best. And so, um, Anyway, I, after I retired, I, I became very, very active with the Houston branch of the NAACP. And I really, I, w- I was the education chair, which meant that I was still able to help, pe- you know, students and, and, and teachers and whatever, you know, because it was about equity. You right, know, right. helping students and the parents to access equitable education. Mm-hmm. And so I did that for several years and then decided I had the, I guess, the political bug. And, uh, you know, I uh, formerly I was the chairman of the board of the Houston Community College, Mm -hmm. uh, the first African-American female chair for two consecutive years. And um, when the position became available as a council member, I I ran for the position, which was certainly an exciting time. I think it was 16 people in my race including a, a phenomenal and well-known rapper. All right. And, yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, it was, it was quite a run, but even in that, I met a lot of young people in the race that uh, are just people that I, I'm very, very proud to know that most of them are still engaged yeah. in helping the community. Some of them have reached out and, uh, you know, we've partnered on some things. And so, and that's ideally, I think the way it should be. I think that, you know, even if you didn't win for the race, you need to say, you know, this is about the people and if I can support and undergird the the person that did win to help the community. Absolutely. You know, you also set the ground floor for you being able at some point to uh, either step into those shoes or into other arenas. Absolutely. And so, uh, you know, I've tried to maintain relationships with uh, most of the people that I, I ran against. Some of them I haven't seen and then others I have. But it's always a pleasure to me because, you know, I, I believe that, you know, God just he just let it shine on me that mm-hmm. I was the one that was given the favor for this particular position. But, you know, I also have to tell people that it's not as easy as it looks. I know people just really think it's an easy thing to do. And all it look easy, but it is not yeah. easy. And I just- giving away food and taking pictures and, and all of that. But there are a lot of very important decisions that you have to make. And then as a district council member, you have a lot of people with a lot of needs. Yes. And yeah. you can't just think that council is going to uh, help everybody. It's, it's my job to do mm-hmm. it. My job. And, and fortunately, I've been blessed with a great staff. Uh, I have a Maka who is my chief of staff, who yeah. is currently kind of out on maternity leave. She she had a baby a little over a month ago. Congratulations. Yes. She had her computer on in the uh, delivery room, really, because she's really <laughs> stayed engaged. And then I have Stephen, my constituency liaison, who talks to a lot of people, a lot of people. And then I'm one of those that even when people find me on the street or they send me a message or whatever, I always write it down so that at some point I can reach back and check. Was that resolved? Did that happen? You uh, what do them? You know, because I'm, I'm, I really want to help people. That That's really what I, that is my calling yes. and I believe my purpose. And then, of course, I have Dee who keeps it all together. She's my okay. office manager, organizer. Mm-hmm. She keeps me in places where I need to be, you know, by making sure it's on my calendar and making yeah. sure I have conflicts on my calendar. And, and then she has a lot of institutional knowledge as well because she's been in with the city for um I mean, and both she and Stephen were uh, actually, they worked with the former council member and they are two of the greatest people that I could have uh, been blessed with. That I, I made the decision to keep them. A lot of people say, oh, you just need to clean house. Yeah. New people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, um, it's just been 
uh, an amazing run for you. And I'm going to just back up and touch bases on a few things that you shared with us today. Firstly, let me just say that I did not know that your relative was the person who helped Sir Sidney Poitier learn how to read. Um, my grandmother's a Poitier. Oh, you. you know, he's a cousin to me. And um, I have been blessed to, to engage with him. And his, his spirit was just beyond anything I had ever encountered. I mean, as people, we meet people and you're someone, because I see you all the time, whether it's on social media, out in the community, people see you, but meeting you in person and getting a chance to touch you and to hear words come out of your mouth, it's a different, um, it's just a different experience. And so thank you for sharing and acknowledging uh, Sir Sidney Poitier, because in the midst I of that, you know, possibly if I had known before, you could have facilitated that question. <laughs> it is what it is. In, in his book, uh, The Measure of a Man, he does talk about it and he talks about his experience from the Bahamas and he isn't shy at all. And because of his book it's one of the, the jewels that we're left with that we can touch and, and feel him. You know, that was truly his gift to the world. So maybe I, I plan on doing a, a tribute and sharing some of my favorite excerpts from the book. Um, and my condolences to all of my family members, the, the you know, his daughters, his six beautiful daughters, my, my cousins, my distance, co distant cousins, my grandmother's only living sister who's still alive, Aunt Miriam, you know, so thank you so much for acknowledging the impact that he has had in your family and that that particular experience that your uh, family member lent to him for him to become a better human being. As it relates to your community work, everyone, if you have not seen this woman's Instagram page, you need to go and take a look. Open up Harris County Recovery Assistance Fund. It will be $30 million. We'll open up for a two week period people will be eligible for $1,500 per household. 20,000 uh, individuals will qualify. It will not be on a first come, first serve basis. We're gonna make sure. Because oftentimes, you know, she and myself, her team, I'm, we're passing information, exchanging information and resources together. When I tell you, I really wanted to touch bases and I have a, you know, a favorite, council member here or there, but I'm talking specifically about the Dr. Evan Shabazz. Her heart is just all in the community. When I tell you Sunnyside has not been the same since before she came on the scene, just to see her making sure that the educators have what they need, that the people are getting the food that they need, if they need health and medical checkups. I mean, I don't know where she gets the energy from. And the more that I grew to understand, you know, her background, I, I started realizing, well, you know, she was built for this because she's definitely a, an all-star. And you have some people that are groomed from the womb to do what they do, you know, their parents and everybody just make sure that they are aligning um, their gifts and their talents to help empower people beyond their family and beyond their immediate circle. So with that being said, Dr. Shabazz, council member Shabazz, what are some of the your favorite projects at this time that you're working on? Like, what are some things that you feel the community really needs to hear, whether they're senior citizens? Because as a council member, I'm sure you're all aware of the demographics and who's in your area and what the household incomes are and all of these things. And, and by the way, everyone, you can go to the council district profile to look at all of the council members uh, units and to see, you know, who they're serving and what their demographics are in their area. But what are some of your favorite projects that you're working on at this time or, you know, up and coming in the future or some that you've worked on in the past? Well, one, one of the things, you know, I know the infrastructure of uh, the city, particularly the South side is pretty old. And so um, right now I'm getting Martin Luther King, uh, redone because I don't know if you've passed down Martin Luther King but this project. Wow, I'm not on that way often, but I have been there. <laughs> you know, we we worked on this, and uh, you know, for a period, it took so long. Period, start, people start saying she didn't tell the truth. They're not going to do this, <laughs> and I. 
are, they are. And so finally, the day that they started, I started getting messages. Oh, they're fixing the street. They're fixing the street. And so that makes me tremendously happy. And then after that, we're actually going to do Cullen, that same uh, area uh, between Griggs and 610, which, again, is like a landmine. And then, of course, I have the uh, Southeast Management and the TERS that really are helping. And we're, they're doing some work and we're getting a lot of drainage work done in my area as well. But we're also going to do emancipation uh, mm -hmm. because emancipation, of course, the, the park has, has been yeah. redone, all of that. And so you certainly need to have a nice road leading to the park. Yeah. And uh, that's some of the infrastructure things that we're doing. And then we're also... Uh, adding uh, bus ramps where, where people can have the covers when they go and they stand on the bus stop. We recently did one out on uh, Almeda Genoa oh, wow. down uh, uh, Amazon, you know, and you know, I say I'm the council member for District D, the district of destination, right? All right. And yes. One of the stations is the Amazon warehouse, which is in District D. I've and, seen it. And I've seen it have torn up the streets. And so now we have it where they have to navigate around. They can't even come up that street anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, we're navigating around and then we, we added a new pad for the people to be able to, you know, be protected from the elements when they stand on that bus stop. And so and we're going to do more and more of those. And we're also planning to do some more uh, cushions, street cushions, you know, because some people drive like me and they're in the Indian 500. I mean, I'm just going to keep it real. Keep I sometimes it real. drive a little fast in my red car. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, just to try to protect people. And we're going to try to put, you know, speed cushions in some of the areas. And one of the things that, that a lot of people don't understand about the speed cushion thing, they say, oh, we need a speed cushion right here on this street. And they don't realize that when the city comes in and they do an assessment where we were prepared to pay, because it comes out of my council district service funds, when we were prepared to pay for that one or two uh, speed cushions, the city says, no, you have to put 20 or you have to put 30. And so it's like, really? And so then, of course, we have to work it out with the resources and try to narrow the scope as much as we can, because we do understand that people need these protections because people are, everybody's in a hurry now, you know, and a lot of people are not attention to what they're doing. They're on the phone and, and texting and all of that. And so mm -hmm. we need to have those cushions to make sure that people have to pause at some point. Mm -hmm. But I guess one of my biggest things that I really, really, um, because I, I'm a, I have an educational background, mm -hmm. I really try to push resources for people to realize that there are educational opportunities available. Yes. And the educational opportunities, I'm not pushing for your colleges, so to speak. You know, all, although the HBCUs are off the chain. Right. Uh, and I'm <laughs> graduating from both Spelman and Texas Southern University. Yes. I, I that grades are very important. Yes. And I think that that's how we change our lives. Yes. That's, that's how we, get, we get a certificate. We get a credential. We get something that could at least maybe de demand at least $15 an hour or, or so. Because yes. when people get at least $15 an hour, then they have to work two or three jobs, which Woo. means a lot of time to, to not only not to live, but to raise their children. Yes. And, and we know that it's key for parents to show up at the schools mm -hmm. uh, and work in two or three jobs. Then you can't go and support your children. So that is vitally important. And so I really and I'm even though I was the, the uh, trustee at the Houston Community College, I'm not just pushing HCC. You know, there are welding programs. There are nursing programs. There are but but. A lot of times people don't access them because they don't know that there are resources. They think, I can't afford to do that. I'm barely making it. And so I, I really want people to realize that there are resources and reach out, to, if not to my office, but to one of the local schools or universities to find out what's available. 
And so in the educational piece, I have been able to give out, I've given away uh, laptops. Mm -hmm. And this, this last Christmas, uh, I gave away laptops to Turner Elementary, actually. Well, it's, it's Lockhart now, temporarily, because it's going to go back to being Turner. Well, Turner Lockhart at some point, I'm predicting that. Because uh, <laughs> it never been anything other than Turner Lockhart. But at any rate, um, gave uh, laptops to the fourth grade class awesome. so that they could, you know, engage in virtual learning. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because we know now computers are so very important, even if you're in school, you know, to have a computer uh, and have that access to be able to uh, Google and do different things that are just right mm -hmm. there at your fingertips. It's just a phenomenal uh, method of educating our mm -hmm. children. And so I guess, you know, so each council member, I guess, has their own push. But I think mine is more educational. And then I'm, I think I'm, I'm more of a social worker kind of council member. You know, I want to make sure that people know that they can get rental assistance, mm. you know, because, you know, I mentioned it just this last week in council. You know, Mayor, people are getting evicted. You know, those, you yeah. know, they wear the moratorium. But a lot of people don't know that they have refurbished some of that money. Yeah. Uh, and because, you know, and, and then even then, students, you can't, students can't be homeless. They can't be uh, going from place to place and, and, and we can't think they're successful. And so, you know, I want to make sure that people have the basics, that they have food, that they have clothing, that they have a roof. You know what I'm saying? That's so. Me. I guess I'm more of a social worker, as I said, kind of uh, council member, because I think you have to take care of people's basic needs before you can expand any in the other place. Because if you're hungry and you don't have a roof, then you're not going to function well. And so those are some of the things that I really have a passion for. Uh, I've always wanted to and like being a resource, mm -hmm. you know, yes. a resource to people in you know, I'm one of those that if you tell me, I may not be able to do anything right now, mm -hmm. but because God is who he is, I'm on he will always bring that conversation back to your memory. And someone will come up and say, do you know somebody that needs? Come on now. Yes. In fact, I do. And so that really gives me a, a, a lot of pleasure. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, one of the biggest pushes, uh, problems that we have, besides the crime, and I, I, I can't get past that, is, is the trash, the trash that we have in the district. So I do have a uh, hot team, mm. uh, and the team goes out, they go out um, Monday through Friday, and they identify areas. And we're, in fact, we're having a cleanup, uh, service day cleanup uh, in Sunnyside Park on Monday. Uh, for the Martin Luther King uh, service day. Mm -hmm. We're doing that from 10 to one, I believe it is. Because, you know, and I really wish that it was so simple as picking up the trash, but it's a mindset yes. uh, that I really wish we could work on, which is why I think the civic engagement is very important. You know, I think everybody needs to join or start a civic club, whether you're living in an apartment or whether you're living in a house, because that changes your mindset. It, it, it gives you a vibe into a community mm -hmm. and then you're less prone to throw trash in somebody's yard or just on the side of the street, because it has to be a mindset change. It's, it's, some, it's not something that, that we can maintain the way I'd like to. But we do go out, you know, people. And if I tell you, people contact me all, all manner of ways. I mean, messenger and uh, all different ways. And, and I'm one of those council members. If I see it, I'm going to respond. It's not, you know, some people say you give people too much access. Well, if I'm not getting access, then I'm not doing what I need to do. Because and I'm not saying I always have an answer. Yes. But if, if you try to contact me. Uh, you can rest assured that if I haven't responded, I didn't get the message. I'm on now. Uh, and it happens with all of these uh, these computer systems. A lot of times they actually try and protect 
the council members' emails as well as our own if you're in education like I am. And people are trying to send emails in and they just can't get in. So you just have to try another avenue of reaching out. One of the things I did want people to know since you've been council member, the amount of people who are now educated, that is a positive statistic and it has gone up tremendously because it used to be down to, it was about 29% of the people in your area who did not have a high school diploma. And now it's only 17%. So there are a lot of strides being made in District D, and it starts with education, everyone. You know, the, 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 when, when we consider the things that we need, we need food, we need clothing, we need shelter. And then if those basic needs aren't met, a person can't even really function day to day just to you know, do the bare minimum in their lives, such as go to work. Why? Because they're hungry or they have to go through so many hoops and hurdles just to sleep in their car or find a place under a bridge. God forbid if they're homeless. And so we need to make sure that those basic needs are met. But then beyond that, then it's time to get educated. And just to see those statistics in your area, there's no doubt that, you know, how you're your your um your district is handling their business is impacting the community that that that, that engagement with the constituents and those conversations with the educators as well as with the principals of those schools and everyone working together because it takes a team to get the work done it takes a team to reach the mentality of these young people to let them know that education is a key to your life that you have to have in order to be all that you need to be. You need it. Well, and you know, and I want to do something because some people were told something which I think is awful. I, I think you never should tell people that they're not college material, right? Oh no, that's that that's sad. That's really sad. The deal is college to me is not necessarily going to get a a four-year degree or a doctorate or whatever. But when you tell young people in particular that they are not good enough, and essentially that's what you're saying, Mm -hmm. put it in their mind that they really shouldn't try to do anything. But I want to encourage people to to say and and to look at it. Just look at the the occupations and the vocations that make a whole lot more money than educators, okay? Yeah. Uh, not having my electrician, my mechanic, my plumber, uh, my hairstylist, and, and different people in my life. That artists, make- you know, They're- some of them are making a thousand dollars a day. <laughs> a day. <laughs> Who may not have gone uh, past high school. You know what I'm saying? So just realize that you need to make a decision about what it is you like. And, and see if you can turn that into something viable and, and see how to get there. That should be your charge. Let me find out how I can get there. And if you know somebody that's already doing it, mm-hmm. then go to, they may want to mentor you, you know, for you to get there, but don't give up on yourself. That, mm-hmm. that is the main thing. Don't give up on yourself and don't ever think that you're not good enough to do whatever, because God Places us all where we need to be. Now he gives us free will. That's right. right. That's right. Find that you want to do something, he will give you the avenue to travel down that road if you want to do it. Now, if you're just playing games, he doesn't have time to be playing games with you. But you could really change your life and be a great provider, not only for yourself for your family, just by identifying that you want to be a welder, that you want to be a a, a veterinarian or whatever it is you want to be. And again, it may take college and it may not, but do not think that if you don't go to college, that you are not good enough. No. So so that's the biggest message. Don't be defeated. Mm -hmm. And words can be very defeating. Mm -hmm. Uh, Say them to young people because they don't really understand You know, because I I think we kind of lost a generation, actually, because when I was coming up, everybody pushed college, 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 college. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't push the vocations, whereas our grandparents. Yeah. Grades and, and, you know, and they really did well. Yeah. My great great grandfather was a black man. (laughs) And you can't get a decent paying job. You know what I'm saying? So find what it is that you have a passion for. 
and, and move in that direction. And you will be so happy with yourself to know, well, first of all, your bank account is going, like you said, you're going to be holding the bag, as they say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but at the same time, you'll be doing something that you enjoy. And so that's, that's one of the things that I push wherever I go. And I, I appreciate that perspective because, you know, who knew and that so many people were feeling like they couldn't necessarily be all that they could be, or they were told that they couldn't. I'll never forget when I attended uh, uh, community college in Philadelphia, I had a particular uh, person who was of a, a different demographic than myself tell me that, oh, you'll never be a nurse. You'll, you'll never be a nurse. You, you, that's just too difficult for you. So the day wow. I received my acceptance letter uh, to nursing school, I was so excited. And I, I went back to see that counselor to show her that letter. But she was really, really, you know, she was a senior citizen. I don't know if she retired or what. But I went back to show her, oh, oh, yes, I did get accepted and I'm doing very well. Now, God did take my uh, path and, and, and transition me into social services. But, you know, I did get accepted into nursing school and, you know, I was good enough. And so and it was an option for you. Yes. And what you're saying is true. People yeah. will tell you what you can't do. Yeah, she said that you wouldn't even have the option. And here you go. Oh, I would yeah. never be able to. She said, oh, you, you'll never be able to go to nursing school. You, you, you'll never. Why don't you choose something else? We have to go see your, your um, guidance counselors and, you know, you're all excited about helping people. And I and I chose that prof profession because my grandfather used to tell me that girl going to be a nurse. She helped everybody. She knows. And I used to be his nurse. I used to literally you know, remove moles off of his back and do things like that. I was, I was serious. My grandfather, oh my God. The, oh my God. he used to, it's a girl, look, he said, get that red can. He had a red can. He would tell me to get that string and wrap it real tight, push it down and tie it. Oh and you would see that mole shrink up. Oh, my grandfather used to let me experiment on him and do it. But he was that kind of man. He, yeah. he was that kind of man. You know, he came from a day and age where, they didn't go to the doctors all the time for everything. They went for checkups and all of that. But if it was something that he could fix, so he could on I you. you praise, man. <laughs> I don't know about that one, but anyway, he, he, he lived he, through it. Yeah, yeah. He, that was just his way. But you know, the encouragement that you provided our our young people today is just great. Is is it's amazing because you you are an example. You know, we do see you in the community, whether it's you or, you know, your team on your Instagram is just consistently overflowing with resources. You're always out and about, always approachable. And so I want you to know that you are appreciated and that your work, the work that you're putting in daily is going to pay off in ways that we will never even see because there are some people who will never have an opportunity to tell you thank you for all that you do to make sure that their needs are being met in your district and beyond. You know, working in City Hall, at City Hall, it's a unit. It's a unit and each person has their slice of the pie that they have to oversee and that they have to, you know, pour themselves into. And it's not easy. So you be encouraged, council member. You be encouraged, you and your team. Thank you for all that you do. And before we wrap it up today on the Inspiration Incubator, is there anything else that you would like people to know? How can they find you? And um, how can they stay connected? Well, of course, as I said, people reach out in all ways. Uh, but the best way, of course, is if you could reach out to my uh, office, uh, my District D uh, at Houston TX, which is also my handle on Facebook and and um, Instagram. And so um, I just want them to know, you know, I'm, I'm a person like this. You know, I serve people. And if somebody reaches out and they really want to meet with me, I, I will meet them. You know, so it's not like you have to be representing somebody organization or whatever. Now I will ask you to give me some ideas because, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to just, you know, chit chat most yeah, of the time. Right. And I want to be prepared for the meeting. And so I, I, I do want people to know that I am accessible. I really, really love what I'm doing. I, I really love 
that God has made me a vessel mm-hmm. uh, to be able to help others to, to get where they need to get. Yes, and right. I want people to know that, that, you know, they, I consider them to be my eyes and ears. You know, it's no way I know everything going on in the district, mm-hmm. but I depend on my eyes and ears yeah. to let know what's going on so that I can try. I can't do anything about those things that I have no clue about, but I am very, very interested and concerned. And so uh, I just don't want anybody to think that, you know, I am this council member and that means that you don't need to reach out to me because I am nothing without the people that I serve. Mm. Uh, it's going to be honest with you. I've, I've always tried to help people because I believe that you need to support the people before you ask to support you. Oh. And so I certainly appreciate this opportunity to speak with you, but I've certainly enjoyed this conversation and my condolences to you as well for, for the loss of cousin. Uh, who is a loss to the world. I mean, when I look back at some of the the uh, uh, films that Sidney Poitier did, uh, it's just amazing uh, the talent that he had. And so certainly I want to give you my condolences. And that is yeah. really, really something that's very special to know that you have a connection with a special person. And so... Um, that's basically it. Just let people know to reach out. This is a new year. Yes. It's been a difficult year with this COVID, but we, we're making it, you know, to the best of our ability. And I want people to stay safe, uh, get tested. Yes. And hopefully you will get vaccinated, you know, because I, I believe it gives you a certain sense of not just protection, but comfort yes. to know have done those things that are necessary. Um, I, I don't want to play Russian roulette with my, my life. And so, you know, I don't know what was in any of those vaccines when I started school. Uh, and But I took them and I think that I'm better and alive just for that. I don't think this is anything that's supposed to, to hurt us as a people, but we can hurt ourselves mm. as a people. Mm-hmm. from just closing our minds to the possibilities that there are vaccines and things out there that can help us. I mean, we don't know what we ate in the food that we had at lunchtime. Come Basically, on. you know, we put in all kinds of preservatives and whatever, yeah. but we eat them and we smile and we get that and full. So mm-hmm. I hope that people would take that similar attitude. And I'm not saying you just inject yourself with anything, but we do so many things yeah. uh, without thinking that I'm trying to understand why we're overthinking this. Right. And so hopefully they will stay safe. Uh, of course, I respect whatever decision people make for themselves. Mm-hmm. But I do believe we do not get vaccinated, where we're stopping the these variants from coming, we are going to have to be vaccinated every six months. So certainly every year, just like the flu, so mm-hmm. that we can stay healthy, because this is a very deadly disease. And now it's really affecting our children. And so if we really care about our children, then we have a responsibility to do that, which is necessary for us to be safe and healthy so that when we're around them, they can be safe and healthy. So with that, I'll say, you know, happy new year. Uh, It's going to be a beautiful year. Uh, We're going to great things. We're going to come out of this and, you know, if the sun is going to shine and it's going to be spring, we're going to have a great, great year. And again, I am so truly blessed to be the council member of district D and I'm, Carolyn Evans Shabazz, council member for District D, the District of Destination. I really, really am honored. I, and I, really am, I know. And, but you think about it, we have so many destination venues in the district. Yes. But we have so many great people in the district as well. And so thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this time. And whenever you want to reach out again, please do so. I will. And I, I plan to be over there supporting as soon as time permits. Many continued blessings for you and thank you for all you do. Thank you.